Hey, everyone, and welcome to the How We Hustle podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Tanya. And we invite you to join us in our unfiltered conversation about the real life hustle of being an entrepreneur. All right, Tanya. So last week, I shared all about what's going on in my business right now. So why don't you do the same? Why don't we make this episode all about you telling everyone where you're at, you know, your business right now, what's what, you know, how you spend your days, how you make your money, if you will, if you want to, or what your business model is, and, and really, you know, what being an entrepreneur is looking for, uh, uh, what it looks like for you right now. Yeah, I'd love to. I've pretty much narrowed it down to what I love to do. And lately, I've just been focused on my LEAP program, which is a group coaching program and basically takes people from wherever they are in their business to increasing their income to $10,000 a month as a minimum. Some people are doing more than that, but it's all about how to sell, how to price your offers, how to do launches. And that's like a group area where I've been helping people with the strategy behind growing your business. And it's been running as of January, will be running for three years, which is pretty crazy. It still blows my mind because originally I didn't even want to do a group program. So it's probably been the most rewarding thing that I do is that LEAP program. And it just keeps getting better and better every single month. So I keep running it every single month. And it's a really intimate group of people. So I love working with people one-on-one and it feels as close to one-on-one as possible. Like I love running a group where I get to know all of their businesses and they have each other. And we have those group coaching calls where I coach them every other week. So basically what I do for that program is I have a coaching call every other Sunday. And then on Tuesdays, I do a live Q&A. And then I do like some trainings for them and things like that um, throughout the month. But it's pretty relaxed because I have a membership area that has all the content. And I really go through teaching them a lot of it live. So whenever there isn't something in the membership area, they just ask for it and I create it, which has been really fun. And then I also do one-on-one. So I have one-on-one clients. And the majority of my one-on-one clients now are launching a program of some sort. So I really work pretty much uh, every other Sunday and then in Wednesday afternoons and for an hour on Tuesdays. So my life is pretty amazing. Like the freedom is incredible and the people I work with are amazing. And I really have been focusing lately with people on launching. And the reason I've been focused so hard on launching is because everyone that keeps coming my way, like everyone I keep attracting has been coming to me with either a failed launch or a launch that they didn't fill, or they've joined a lot of other programs in the past. And they've been getting information about launching like do a launch in a month or two weeks or a week. And people just tell them just post on social media, which is not how Tanya does a launch at all. (laughs) When I do a launch, it's like two to three months long. And it's not just selling for two to three months. Like there's actually stages of a launch. There's things that you do. There's price increases. There are strategies that you do to build your list. And you have to go through all of these processes, I believe, whatever it looks like. Obviously, we customize it for each client. But it's crazy to me that people don't realize like how this different stages are imperative to creating hype for a new program and getting the message out. And then other people go through their own process of launching. Like if you've never heard of a program before, you probably have to hear about it a couple of times before you're like, this is the right program for me. You know, people who are purchasing go through their own experience of like, oh, I'm not ready. Oh, this isn't right for me. Oh, I have questions. Um, this is not the right time. I'm not at the right stage. Like they have to go through their own process of figuring out that this program is perfect for them. And so, and getting to know the person who's running the program, like some of my clients have never run a group program before or a course. And so getting their name out as being an expert in this area and having this program is also a big piece of that puzzle. So I've really been focused on launching in helping people through a launch because the other side of that is that launching is a emotional roller coaster ride 
it's the best way I can describe it is some days you're like on fire and you think this is going to work. And then other days you're like, oh my God, nobody's joining. And like, what am I going to do? This isn't going to work. Where are these people going to come from? Is always the question that people ask me. Like, I don't know anybody. It's only my friends and family. I don't have a huge audience. And none of that can will get in the way of you filling out your program. Like when I take people through my launch strategy, everyone fills their program. Whether they fill it, excuse me, right from the beginning or throughout the launch or right at the end, everyone fills their program. And so it's, I've, I've just been noticing how many people have been discouraged by launching and how many people really need support to stick with a launch. Because a lot of people will say, oh, I'm fine with this many people. Like if they wanted 10 people and they have four people, they're like, oh, I'm good with four or I'm good with seven. It's okay. Like that's fine. But at the end of the day, like number one, a program has to be profitable for you to run it. And when you price it out, I price it out with them to make sure that they're making enough money throughout the launch and throughout the program that it's sustainable for them. Like the only reason my LEAP program has been running for three years is because it's a profitable program for me to run. If I had to run 12 other programs at the same time, like that would be really difficult for me to do like launching and providing the services and all of that would be make my life pretty difficult. So I think it's important for people to realize one, your, your program has to be profitable from the beginning Two, that there's a strategy for launching and three, like not to give up and to stick with it. Because even when you don't think that anybody knows about your launch and even when you think that nobody is going to join like that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're really believing that, if you're feeling that, if you don't have a strategy to get new people in and to get people on the phone or to get people to hear about the program, to answer people's questions about it, to really pump it up, then you know you, you will end up with nobody in your program. And that it needs to be longer than a month, longer than a week. You know, like I feel like too many people give up too soon when it comes to launching. So I think that's one of the main places where support is really, really important. Like there are other things that you can do in your business where maybe support isn't as necessary for everybody, but I've never seen somebody go through a launch where they didn't give up and they went through all the pieces and all the stages of a launch without any help. One, you just wouldn't know about them. Two, you probably would think you could skip steps or you don't have a strategy. So I think like that's the place where I've been focusing. And my clients obviously ask me a lot about creating a program specifically for launching. And I've thought about that, but I just love like that's included in my leap program. And I just love keeping everyone in the leap program because you know, lots of my clients, I'd say half my clients are launching a program during their, like in my LEAP program. So I wouldn't want to switch it up or like separate people. And I also find it's hard to like find people that are literally launching their program at the exact same time as somebody else. But I think it's really powerful for them to see that like launching works and knowing people that have been through it. So like that community is also essential. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, what I like what, you, what you're doing is sort of what I'm doing as well is, um, you know, you have, you're being deliberate about, about what you do, right? Like you have an offer and you're sticking to it. And like you said, if you had, you know, you could easily make a million offers, but then it would be hard to run a business like that. Um, and I've you know, tried that. Yeah. I tried that in 2018. I, I really wanted to run a higher level mastermind and I did and it was fine. But one, I still felt like people weren't at the right level. Um, they weren't all at the same level. And maybe that was my mistake in who I let in. But And like some people were launching. Some people just wanted to learn about launching. Some people were doing higher level content like you know, retargeting Facebook ads, but some people just wanted to learn about it. And I feel like it, it was hard for me to say, well, this is something that's in my leap program. And this other stuff is in my mastermind and you can only get access to it 
if you're a part of my mastermind. Like that just felt icky for me to be like, well, you have to pay extra to get access to this content. So instead I just put all the content together and yeah, it's a lot of content now for anyone who joins my LEAP program, but at least it's like separated in stages. And I feel like I love giving people all of the resources that they need to be successful and not limiting certain content based on programs that I'm running. And you also mentioned that you, you, you have like time off. So you created a business which has, you know, what I call the big three, you know, which is like income, impact, and lifestyle. You know, you, you have a group program. So you're able to work with, you know, a larger number of people and you're able to impact them. And, you know, you're creating a program where they can all come together on group calls and in, you know, a community and benefit from each other. So they're getting a lot of value out of it. But at the same time, you've set it up so that you're not just working one-on-one with clients and teaching the same clients the same thing over and over and over. You know, you've created a membership area where you kind of have the core content and you've structured the, you know, the, the support that you offer in a way that allows your clients to get, you know, a massive amount of value and, you know, transformation, but also, you know, it, it, you're designing your own lifestyle um, in a way that is, is with the win-win. So it's really, you know, being very deliberate about the way you set up your business so that you are able to check those three boxes. Like, you know, you, you know, you're able to make an income, make a good income, uh, impact a lot of people, but also you're not tra- you, you know, you're, you're disconnecting your income from your time, which allows you to you know scale your income while also scaling your lifestyle. Yeah. And I think that, I also focused on that for a really long time, but I've discovered for myself that I love doing one-on-one. Like it is still to this day, my favorite thing to do is to work with people one-on-one. And even though people are always like, one-on-one isn't scalable and you know, you have to leverage your time. (laughs) Sorry, my cat is knocking things over and you need to leverage your time. But for me, that isn't the only most important thing to me. Like I wanted to focus in 2019 on doing things that I really enjoyed despite if it was scalable, despite the time it took. And I mean, at the end of the day, like I really only work every other Sunday and Wednesday afternoons and for an hour on Tuesday. So it's not like I don't have tons of time. Like I do, I've created lots of freedom. But when I set that up, I really was actually focusing on just doing the things that I enjoy doing and not actually looking at what's scalable and what's not. And I only take on five one-on-one clients a year. So it's not like I have tons of one-on-one clients that are draining me. I love to be able to speak to my one-on-one clients every day. I love to be able to support them through the ups and downs every single day of launching and like growing their business. And so because that was so important to me, even though it's not scalable, I I wanted to make sure that I could still do that. I think a lot of people like burn themselves out when it comes to one-on-one because they take... Yeah, but, you're, but you're able to not burn yourself out because you also have your group program. So it's like creates a nice yeah. situation where, you know, you're almost... You've set up your group program in a way that allows you to take on, you know, a certain number of hand-picked, you know, hand-picked in the sense that, you know, you're right for them and they're right for you. So it works for both of you. But you're able to take on a certain number of one-on-one clients to really meet, you know, helps fulfill your, you know, the reason your, you know, your why or the reason you're doing it because you like doing it while also, you know, but you set it up that way. So it works that way because you've been deliberate about the way you set it up. Exactly. And like, not just selling your time for a hundred bucks an hour. Like that's not the model you've chosen because obviously that model doesn't really work that well. Yeah. And like, I mean, I obviously wouldn't do it for a hundred dollars an hour, but even if I was just doing one-on-one, like I feel like I would still enjoy that, but I'm glad that I did create this group program that gives it, like I am able to help people who are not at the level to pay $2,000 a month for one-on-one support. They can still get access to a community. They can still get access to my coaching, like personal coaching and my group coaching calls. Cause I coach if you show up, you get coached. Like every single person gets personal coaching on every single call. And I know that that is probably the thing that makes Leap very different from other group programs is that they actually do get 
personal coaching and most group programs, you just get like hot seats where like you might never get chosen for the whole time you're in the program. I've heard that from people, but like leap is great because it gets people to the point where they are able to afford or they're at the stage where they're ready to launch a course and they choose to get more support from me. And they like, you know, they don't have to, they can still launch just being in my lead program and still have all the support that they need. But if they want extra support, it's there. So it also like it filters into my one-on-one for sure and gives people access to my coaching and gives people access to my content no, uh, at a very reasonable cost. Like majority of programs, you would never get coaching for the cost of leap, like ever. You know, you would never get such a like intimate group. You would never get access to the kind of content that you get in my leap program. And it does like allow me to leverage my time. It does allow me to bring people in um, that wouldn't be able to, that wouldn't otherwise get to work with me, but also bring people in who just need like extra support or extra community or extra strategy and give them access to something they would never be able to have access to before. So I think it definitely like balances it out and it works really well and they get access to not just me, but amazing other people in the group. Like all the ladies in the community are doing incredible things, but even some of my one-on-one clients that come to my group coaching calls as well realize that when you're like going through a launch or when you're going through selling something or a promotion or something, it's crazy how you don't realize or recognize how incredible you're really doing until you get that kind of encouragement and being seen by other people who are like, wow, that's incredible. Or like seeing what other people are doing and realizing like that it's normal for what you're going through or that, you know, seeing behind the curtain because it's not all rainbows and butterflies, especially launching, but throughout your business, like things happen, things come up, like people go through things and realizing like there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing. You're not doing your business wrong. There's, you know, it's part of the process. It's normal and people go through it. And there's tons of people who can tell you like, don't give up because like there's something good on the other side. I went through that myself and this is where I am now, you know? So I think it's like a really beautiful mix. I mean, sometimes I get that inkling like, should I be doing more or should I create something new? But every time I think about that, I'm just reminded of like how incredible that program is. And that I really, if I wanted to add anything, I can just add it to the program and keep everyone in one community and give them access to all of it. So like, it just feels really good. It feels really fulfilling and it gives me tons of freedom, but also allows me to like work with incredible humans. Like my life just feels like a dream most of the time. Obviously, I have my good days and bad days too. But having that group of humans that I get to work with, that I feel so honored to be on the journey with and to get to be a part of like what they're building is just so fun to me. So I'm very grateful for the life I got to live. And I'm also really grateful that I finally like broke away from some of the coaches that I've had and just said, you know what, like, this is the way I do things. And I don't really care what you have to say about it because so many people told me one-on-one's not scalable. You need to have a self-study course. You need to do this. Like you can't coach people on every single call. You spend too much time helping your clients. Like you give too much. And at the end of the day, like that's why I got into this business was to help people. It wasn't to never have to work. It was to help people grow their business. Like that is the gift that I was given. That like this is something that comes easily for me. And I feel like it is my purpose to like to use that gift to help people. So I don't really care if like I am happy to help people every day if that's what they need. Like I am happy to be available for them because one, it's fulfilling. And two, like that is the gift that I was given. And I just feel grateful that I got to live this life. So, I mean, obviously, somebody asked me at my like family dinner the other day, how did you have the confidence to build that course three years ago? And I look back on it and think like, I have no idea. Like, 
what made me think that I could run a group program when I didn't even want to? Or like, how did it evolve to be like three years later? Like, I can't believe I've been running that program for three years. But obviously, like the universe guided me to do that. And it has well, been... I remember awesome. the same time that we were having a conversation about starting this podcast, which mm-hmm. was like crazy over three years ago. Yeah. But you were you were considering um, an opportunity that... Oh my God, yes. How did you remember that? I was just thinking like that seems like... On one hand, it seems so long ago. On the other hand, it seems like it was yesterday, you know? Oh my God, I forgot that happened. Like, wow, Mike, you have a great memory. So basically, guys, what happened was is that my business was in its very early stages. So I was still working my nine-to-five job. I'd never had a one-on-one client. I'd, I'd been charging like, I don't know, between $50 and $100 maybe to work with me. So I hadn't really made any money. I'd been coaching people for like a year. Most of people I coached for free, not going to lie. Because again, I was like, oh, I would do this for free and I'm getting paid so well at my job. I don't need money. But what happened was is I went on a trip to Italy and with a coach that I really admired. And then her husband was there and they were starting a business. And I had had some some really great chats with her and her husband throughout the trip. And they wanted to start a business. And they asked me to um, be a part of it. And I was like, wait, what? Me? Why me? (laughs) Because you know, like when you're like idols or you're like mentors, like want you to be a part of their next business, you're like, wait, what? Me? Why me? (laughs) Right? So it's, it's like, an honor. And I remember that it was like a crossroads for me where I had to figure out like, if I go in this direction, like it would mean kind of putting my own business on the back burner and like kind of ignoring it and not growing it anymore and kind of letting it go. And I remember being like, why does this not feel right for me? Like this, I just had this like at the time, I didn't know if it was my fear or my intuition, but I just kept questioning why it didn't feel right. Like I just kept saying like, I don't know, like this should be like, I should be so excited, but instead I'm super scared. And I was like, maybe like this would be amazing. Like I could get to work with them. Like I like love them. Like why, why aren't I like more excited about this? And because I was like really cautious, like I said, okay, let's just try it for a month and like see what happens. And which I'm glad I did. But in that month, like it kind of just wasn't what I thought it would be. You know, like I didn't, I wasn't doing the types of work that I really wanted to do, which was coaching. I wasn't really coaching um, people. And that was the role that I really wanted. So eventually I said, you know what, this isn't right for me. And literally the next month was when I started making like five, 10, 15,000, like So that was like October, November. And November, I got my first one-on-one client for $5,000. And then December, I booked another one. And then in January, I made like over $20,000 from my launch and this one webinar that I ran. And so like, thank goodness I didn't go in that direction because literally like I was at a crossroad, but it was basically like the catalyst to like my business exploding after that. Like, because I said no to that opportunity and yes to like focusing on my business, my business literally exploded after that. I literally forgot that that happened. Like, so, but yeah, like who knows? Like you never know why something doesn't feel right or like what direction you should go in. But notice. I I also think that part of it is, and this is what I was sort of talking about on the last episode that I, when I was talking about my like journey up till now, is you kind of like put things into action and then like the universe will point you to the right place. You know, like Mm -hmm. you kind of got into coaching, you started surrounding yourself with the kind of people that you wanted to be part of your tribe, if you will. And you went to Italy and you were like, you know, hanging out with coaches and high level people who, and you know, that led you to, but at the end of the day, you ended up exactly where you're supposed to be because you, you know, it has nothing to do with that that decision as to whether or not you take that job. It was like, you took a decision to move towards coaching and that's just where you ended up. And the universe definitely showed me that it was the right decision to make because 
yeah, like I would never have known that that was like on like around the corner, but I think it's, it, it's a good message of that. You really don't know like what is around the corner for you and your business, but like giving up or like putting something that you really care about or that you really want on the back burner is likely not the answer. You have you know? to put things into action to be able to get feedback from like the universe or yeah. from the market or whatever it is to, to then, you know, have a better idea of where you're actually going, you know, like. Yeah. And you never know like when something's just going to like take off. Like I feel like I've been talking with a lot of people lately about how, you know, you see people who you think online are doing so well. And then they like tell, then they have like some explosive month and then they tell you like more information about how badly they were doing before that month. And like, you know, you really never know like what's happening in someone's business. Like you never know what's happening behind the scenes. Um, and you never really know like what's going to be the thing that they need to change or the thing you need to change to actually like have that explosion or to, to kind of like see the light or to get into your like flow. But I think like giving up is never the answer. Like if you really, and I see people all the time who have been like at this for like a while. And if you haven't given up on it and you've been doing it for a while, like trust that you're not going to give up on it. You know, like you wouldn't continue for months and months and months on a path if it wasn't meant for you. It's literally the only way. The only way you're going to like make it (laughs) in anything is to keep doing it. Cause you're like, you can't just start something and expect it to like, you have to go, you have to play the long game. Yeah. And, and yeah, like if it feels wrong from the start, like when I did my yoga teacher training, like, trust me, I was like, what did I get myself into? Like, this is not the direction that I wanted to go. You know, like this doesn't feel right. Or even like with you with the like book, like, yeah, like that's something you enjoy doing, but it ended up like that the way it works wasn't the only thing you wanted to focus on. Yeah. I got into that business cause I was interested in it and I thought I'd be really Love it. But then you realize that like the nature of the business is a little bit different than you thought, but that's fine because that's just feedback. You adapt and you, you know, you figure out, okay, well, what do I like about it? What do I not like yeah. about it? And you change your course and like you had to go through that feedback cycle to get to where you are. And it's like, it's so easy to look at a successful person and be like, wow, like that's such a great, but you don't realize that they what goes into their and business and like grinded and like, you know, didn't sleep a few nights because they like were figuring it out. And it's easy to look at the final product and be like, wow, that person really has it all figured out, but there's one way to figure it out. And that's- or even like looking at someone else's business and thinking like, oh, I'd love to run a business like that. And like not really seeing like what goes into running a business like that. Like, like so many people have told me that like Leap should be an offer. Like it should, I should offer it as a self-study And because there is so much content and the content is amazing. And so like why, like that I'm missing an opportunity for people who don't want the coaching calls, but only want the content. And I tried that in the beginning of 2018 from like January to March and like people bought it. But at the end of the day, like I just didn't like making money that way. Like I didn't like that. And I just felt like it wasn't the way that I wanted the content to be digested or like the community that I wanted to build or how I wanted to make money. And I was like, I like knowing my clients. Like I like helping them. Like I like them getting that extra support and that's what I want the program to be about. So you never know, like even though something can work and like makes money, doesn't necessarily mean that that's like how you want your business to be. You know, and I feel like, again, like you said, with the feedback, it's like, you got to try things to figure out if you liked it or not. So I've definitely like found my thing. I feel like this is what feels good. Like working with one-on-one clients, having my LEAP program and coaching people through that and keeping it intimate. So like, that's what I've really been focused on. And we've really been focused on attracting i've been focused on attracting people who are interested in doing launches so it's great because now half of leap is doing launches and all of my one-on-one clients are launching and so it's just been really fun one of my clients is always like tanya seriously are you like i don't even know how you like doing this like because they go on such an emotional roller coaster that they're like oh my god i must be the worst client ever and i'm like no like this is why you have support like this is what i like helping people through like it's not 
it's like mindset, it's like strategy, it's everything, you know, like it's sales calls, it's selling, it's dealing with rejection and objections and creating and design and all of it. So I really enjoy it. I've been loving what I've been doing. I find that I still attract incredible humans and I feel so grateful for that. But that is proof that like the universe brings you exactly who you're meant to work with at the exact right time. And so, yeah, now that is my life and I'm very grateful for it. So that's pretty much where I'm at. Took me three years to figure out like what exactly I wanted my business to look like. But now it's just been really fun. So we've been focused on the podcast and I've been all interviewed on a bunch of podcasts and podcasting, live videos, and working with my clients pretty much. Awesome. Well, that's the update. That was a good little, uh, lots of little nuggets of wisdom in there. So thank you for sharing. Okay. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. And we'd love to hear from you guys. So if you're thinking about launching a program, if you have questions about launching, if you've had a failed launch, if you don't want to have a failed launch, (laughs) and um, that's something that you're interested in doing in the new year, please do reach out to me. I'd be happy to jump on the phone with you. I also have these deep dive calls where I help people set up the strategy for their launch or for their 2020 year. So that's also an option that for people that are not ready for 101, but want to get some additional support in the strategy area, feel free to reach out. I offer three of those a month. And if you have any questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram and let us know if you resonated with this episode. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. So thanks. All right, see you later. If you loved this episode, let us know by taking a screenshot and sharing it on your Instagram stories. Tag me at Wholehearted Business Coach. And you can find me at LinkedIn Michael.